Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working through the ABRSM Theory Grades step by step. We're working our way through Grade 4 ABRSM Music Theory and Practice Workbooks if you want to have that to hand. Also, there are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 and accompany each step of this series. You can also find links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and there's information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guidebook, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time once you're in the exam room. So if you visit SharonBill.com it's all there for you. If you can give me a like that'd be fab and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come and we're cracking on with triads on the chords 1, 4 and 5. So if you turn with me to page 24, we'll continue with this section. Now this is section G and so if you want to also turn in your PDF documents, you can find the information that I'm going to be referring to here as well, just to act as a little reminder. Here we go, found it. On the information that we'll be discussing here. So I want to just first reach for a sheet of manuscript paper so that I can explain what we're doing. There's no new information here at all but we're just applying it in a slightly different context. We're now going to look at it as a piece of music, a harmony over two clefs, not just as an exercise. And so let's look at the chords for example, in C major, let's just pick the easiest key. So we're going to be looking at chords 1, 4 and 5. So of course 1 is built on C, the first note of the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4 is F, is the fourth, or the subdominant, and G is the fifth. And so if we build our triads on those, that went very wonky, shall I do that again? Very wonky notes recently, let's try again. C, E, G, first, third, fifth, first, third, fifth. And so let's look at what notes we've got. We've got a C, E, G, we've got an F, A, C, and we've got a G, B, D. And so it's much easier in this sort of pressure of an exam, instead of continually trying to create manuscript paper or write out notes to just write it out in letter form. So in C major we're going to have 1, 4, 5. C of course is 1, C, D, E, F is 4 and G is 5. So there are our first root notes. We call those root notes because they're at the root of the chord at the base of the triad and so the first is C first, second, third is E, fifth is G, F, A, C, first, third, fifth, G, B, D. And if you just get used to writing them in letter form like that, it makes the uh, identifying chords so much easier when you get to the actual exercises. And so let's see that in action now in this next exercise four, which asks us to name the key of each of these extracts. We can't name the chords until we know the key, until we know the tonic, nothing else makes sense. And then we need to identify the chords by marking underneath, whether it's one, four or five, tonic, subdominant or dominant. And so here, they've given one for us. So let's have a look at this example that's done for us. So we're in the key of F major. We know that because we've got a key signature of B flats with no unnecessary, unexplained accidentals. So we need to think of chords one, four and five. So we know that one is F, F, G, A, B. The key signature will deal with anything of flats. And then C, F, A, C first, third, fifth, and then we can double check because we know there's our fifth here. So we know there's a double check point. B, D, F is the triad, one, three, five, B, C, D, E, F, and C, E, G. And so now we're um, identifying chords split between two staves. This would be like um, 
a German chorale, which would be sort of um, hymn music. Bach wrote loads of chorales, and they are massive four-part harmony studies. So this is the guise that you will often be finding these chords in. And so if we know we're in F major, we need to identify these chords as marked, and we can read, we've got a C, a C, an E and a G. Therefore, we know it's chord 5. Here we've got an F, a C, an F and an A. So we know that it's chord 1. We've got a B, D, F, B. Of course, it's flattened, but the key signature will take care of all of that. We don't need to worry about it. And we can see that that's chord 4. Now, notice a triad, as the name implies, tri has three notes. However, when we split it over two staves, we double a note. There's lots of rules that we'll be coming into which note you double and so on. However, for now, it's just enough to know that one of these will be doubled. It's usually going to be the key note, the bottom note, the root of the chord. And then it's still, in principle, the same chord, just with a, a doubled note. And so if you get used to writing your triads out first, recognising them in later exercises, will be easy peasy. If when you're identifying your triads, you find that some of these chords are really obscure and they're not fitting into chords 1, 4 and 5, it'll be because you've chosen the wrong key. So if you've missed the fact that it's a major or a minor key and you're getting really obscure triads, you know that your key signature's wrong. And so if you re redress that, your chords will start to make sense. So, if you want to crack on and have a go yourself, please do go ahead. If not, I'll um, go through this one with you and then you can try the next two. And just keep re-accessing into the video once you've had a go and we'll work through them together. So as soon as you're ready, try yourself, but we'll work through this one together first if you'd prefer that. So let's see what key we're in here. So we've got a key signature of F sharps, which suggests G major. There are no other accidentals that would tell us otherwise. And so we know that we're in G major. And so that, that enables us now to sort out our triads. We want one, four and five. If one is G, G, A, B, C, four is C and five is D. And we can double check that because first, third, fifth, there's G, B, D. And so we know there's our fifth. So counting a triad here, C, E, G, and then D, F, A. Of course it's F sharp, but your key signature will deal with that, so there's no need for you to worry about that. And so that's all the thinking done now. We just need to allocate a chord symbol to the appropriate chords. So here we have, including bass and treble, a G, a D, a G and a B. So there's our chord one, and the G has been doubled to add the fourth harmony note. Here we've got a C, G and E. We've just got three at the moment now. C, E, G. So that's a chord four. So it's all falling nicely into place, and so we know we've got the right key. And here we've got a D, A, D, F sharp A. We've actually got five in this chord now. But the principle remains, it's this chord 5, we've got a dominant chord with D, F sharps and A. So there's a chord 5. So there we go. So have a go at this next two. And then re-access into the video once you've had a go of these. Don't worry if you get it wrong, you can always try again. It's always best to learn by your mistakes. I know I keep saying that, but it's really true. So I'm hoping you've had a go of this, and let's try it together now. So here we've got a key signature of four sharps with no other accidentals, and so we know we're in the key of E major. And so now we've prepared to give our triads their allocated name. So the first, the tonic of course is E, E, F, G, A is the fourth, B is the fifth. Now let's count the triads. We want the first, the third, and the fifth. So E, F, G, A, B. And there we go. We know we're right. Fifth. First, third, fifth. There's our fifth. A, B, C, D, E. B, C, D, F. There we go. So we can now just name these triads 
simply without too much fuss. The reason there's two stems here is it's showing you that uh, two parts are sharing the same note. So it's still four part harmony here, but two notes, the bass and the tenor as it would be if it was a choir, are sharing this bottom note. So we've got an A, E and C, so that's chord four. Of course they will be sharps as the key signature dis dictates, but we don't need to worry about that. The key signature deals with all of that. We've got B, B, D, and of course this F lasts two beats, so that's still part of this chord. That's still a lingering harmony, so we've got B, B, D, F, so that's chord five. Of course it's an F sharp, but they, that's in your key signature, that's sorted. And then we've got E, B, E, G, chord one. Let's have a go at this last one together. So we've got a key signature of three sharps, nothing else tells us otherwise. So we're in a major key and it would be A major. And so we need to write out our harmonies, one, four, and five. So of course A is chord one, there's the tonic. A, B, C, D is four. A, B, C, D, E is five. And so we now need to add up the triads, first, third, and fifth. A, B, C, D, E. And there's one, three, five, and there we go. We know there's the fifth forming the base of the dominant, the chord five. So counting first, third, fifth for the chord four, D, E, F, G, A, and then chord five, E, F, G, A, B. There we go. So we can now just nicely name these chords. So we've got E, B, E, G, B. So the fact that some are doubled really doesn't matter. It's all part of this chord five. That's your dominant chord. Here we have, now we've got lots of ledger lines. If that's middle C, we've got C, D, E, F, D and F, A, D and F. That's a chord four. Here we have A, C, E, and then this here, let's count up one, three, five, seven, eight is an octave A. This is a piano piece here. So we've got, you know, we've got five fingers in each hand that we can make use of. So we've got a massive chord here with lots of uh, duplicates of the chord, but the principle remains the same. A, C, E, A, C, E, A. It's a chord one with lots of doublings, but the principle is the same, the harmony is unaffected. There we go then. And so we'll try the next ones in the next exercise, in the next page. Exercise four is continued. So if you want to go ahead and try those yourself, and then I'll go over those with you in the next video, just to check them over. I do hope that's been helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of everything that's there for you to help you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.